We're here with Terry Fitzpatrick, who is leading the charge for the Korean War Veterans Association in Gainesville, Florida. Good afternoon, Terry. How you doing? Good afternoon, Jeffrey. Doing fine. Good. Can you tell us a little bit about the Korean War Veterans Association in Gainesville and what your role is? Korean War Veterans Association, we're a chapter of a national organization, and it was started about uh, 10 or 12 years ago. The function of the thing was to serve veterans, help them in any way we could. And uh, we raised funds for them, or phone cards, or any kind of help we can give them. That's um, really admirable. Let's go back to uh, the time when you served in uh, Korea. How, how old were you, and uh, when did you get to Korea? I got there in November 1951. I believe I was 20 years old at the time. And uh, this is after the, the infamous reservoir. It had become kind of a static war by then. It was trench warfare. Most of the time we were out on patrols for uh, ambushing enemy patrols and capturing prisoners for interrogation, things like that. And when you entered uh, the service, uh, what rank were you? I entered as a private E2 because I'd been in the National Guard. When I first went in the regular army, they shipped me over to Germany on occupation duty. But uh, the Korean War had started and I wasn't there to be on occupation duty. 19 years old, war. Yeah. So I volunteered for Korea and they sent me there. Platoon sergeant got hit pretty bad when we were in the process of fighting over a hill. And uh, he died on the way back to the mass unit. So. They promoted me to promote to platoon sergeant. And uh, again, I had enough points, and they said, no, no, you've got a critical. So you, you were trying to see if you could get a little leave. Yeah, I wanted to go home. <laughs> I was sick of war already. But uh, anyway, I was there on uh, July 27, 1953. All day long, everybody been firing everything they had. At 10 p.m. when the ceasefire went into effect, it was dead silence. I mean, it was eerie. Just everything quit. 10 p.m., that was it. All the shooting and, and mortar rounds and artillery all stopped. And you were on the North Korean side. You had to get down... Uh... 24 hours to get out of there. So we had to pack up whatever we could, including we were living in bunkers with timbers that we acquired on the top of them, sandbag them. And to save the timbers, because we might need them back there, and we didn't want to leave them for the Koreans and Chinese, so we dismantled all that and took it back and did it all in 24 hours. Wow, that's amazing. After surviving uh, the Korean War and serving our country in a, an amazing, honorably way, you've been involved with the Korean War Veterans Association for a while now. What are some of the things that the Korean War Veterans Association of Gainesville does? Basically, we've contributed funds to things like uh, phone cards for active duty veterans. We uh, finance the outdoor kitchen, kitchen at the Fisher House. We did that. We furnish color guards for veterans and to some civilian functions. And we serve uh, we furnish uh, honor guards for veterans' funerals, which include rifles and a bugler. And also we're uh, the park rangers for the Memorial Park on Kanapawa Road. We take care of that. And then on Veterans Day out there, we're in charge of Veterans Row and, and uh, the parking, so, you know, valet parking, things like that. It sounds like uh, for a young man of 92 years old, you're staying pretty busy. Pretty much so, it's, it's a dance sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> well, listen, I want to tell you that uh, on behalf of Melden Law and CBS, we're really excited to give you an award. I'd like to present you with the Veterans Making a Difference Award. And we'd like to present you with a $500 Visa gift card so you can help all the veterans that need help. Congratulations, Thank Terry. Thank you so much. Thank you. If you would like to nominate a veteran for this award, email vets at cbs4.com.